What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we'll be talking about if you can make it to the NHL through the path of NCAA hockey. But before we dive into it here, just a quick reminder to absolutely smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell and share the video if you like the content. Also at any point throughout the video, if you have any questions for us, anything you want to talk to us about, feel free to drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And also last quick thing here, like with all of our videos, there will be timestamps throughout the video. So if you want to go ahead and skip to a specific section, you can, or if you just want to watch the whole video, you can too. It's completely up to you. All right. So we're making this video here because Making the NHL has pretty much been a lifelong dream of all of ours, right? Every hockey player, when they grow up, you know, the, you ask them, you know, what their goal is in life and they all tell you, I want to make the NHL or I want to be like so-and-so and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and that makes sense, right? Hockey is a wonderful sport. If you can get play, paid a lot of money to play in a great league and play every day, I mean, it makes sense, right? Everybody wants to make the NHL. A valid question from there to ask is, is NCAA hockey or in fact, any other collegiate hockey route, is this path actually gonna help me or hinder me to get to the NHL? It's a valid question to ask, and I think you know a lot of parents want to know this uh, this answer. So, I'll give you guys a little spoiler here. We'll dive into it a little bit deeper, but spoiler is that yes, the NCAA is actually a very good path if you want to go play in the NHL. And we'll go into the stats in a sec. But overall, more and more players, we're seeing the trend here that more and more players. Um, you know, composing the NHL have played NCAA hockey. So that's a good sign. So overall, yes, it is a pretty good path. It's not for everyone. Some players, you know, major junior is a better path. Other players, it's other paths before going to the NHL. But NCAA is, you know, a solid option if you want to, you know, aspire to play in the NHL one day. All right. So first quick note I want you guys to note here is that not all NCAA and collegiate programs are created equal. And that's a big point of this video here is to give you the exact breakdown and exact stats to go over of which NCAA programs, which collegiate programs altogether actually advance players to the NHL and to other pro leagues. You know, it's important to know this because that way you can make the best possible decisions and you can determine, hey, NCAA is a path for me or no, major junior is a path for me, U sports a path for me and so on. You know, when you have this info, it's easier to make those kind of decisions. And last quick note here you know statistics apply to populations not individuals okay this is really important you know these stats aren't meant to you know put your path set in stone and say oh I don't have a chance if I go this way or that way it's not true it just gives you a general idea that if you pursue this path your chances are a little bit higher and if you pursue that path and so on but everyone's situation is different and it doesn't mean if you don't play at Boston College Boston University or on a top major junior team and all that that you know making the NHL or making uh, another pro hockey league is impossible right it's just that certain paths uh, have shown a history of making it easier for players to make those the NHL or other high-end pro leagues. So again, statistics apply to populations, not individuals. So don't let these stats discourage you, but more to guide you in the right direction. All right, so let's dive into the stats for NCAA D1 hockey here. So this is a pretty staggering stat here. So as of now, or it was as of 2020, something like that, close to now, about 33% of the players in the NHL have played NCAA D1 hockey. That's a lot, right? That's a third of the league, so that's a decent amount. If you compare that to 2000, the year 2000, 20 years ago, only 20% of players in the NHL played NCAA D1 hockey. So the trend has shown that it's really increased and uh, you know, NHL scouts, GMs, coaches, they're more and more looking for players that have played NCAA D1 and that have went down that path because there's a lot of good players over there. And you know, the way they've made strides since the year 2000 to really develop their players into really, really solid hockey players and people. So, you know, the trend is showing more and more that the NHL is going towards NCAA D1 players. Obviously, you know, they're still gonna pick major junior players, players from other pro leagues, players that are international, all that. But more and more, NCAA D1 is becoming relevant. And, you know, another stat here is that 7% of players who play NCAA D1 at least play one game in the NHL. And if they don't play that game in the NHL, the other 93%, most of them usually can land, if they choose to, in a good pro hockey league somewhere, right? It could be, you know, the AHL, if not that, the East Coast Hockey League, you know, sometimes the Southern Pro Hockey League can go abroad to Europe. You know, a lot of players go a lot of different places. 
but they at least have the opportunity to play in a good pro league. So if your goal is to go play pro hockey, you know, obviously the NHL is what we all target, but at least pro hockey, you know, NCAA D1, you know, is a no brainer. It's a good uh, path to go down if that's your goal for sure. One thing I want to mention here is that it gave you the general stats, but that is general for all of NCAA D1, right? Not all 60 NCAA D1 programs are created equal. We have to keep that in mind. Some powerhouse programs consistently year after year send NHL uh, players to the NHL. You know, for example, Boston University, you know, Boston College are two powerhouse programs. Uh, University of North Dakota, you know, all those powerhouse programs, usually they send a lot of players and it's very tilted in their favor versus, you know, other programs. For example, you know, I hate to throw anyone under the bus here, but you know, the Atlantic Conference and the NCAA D1 uh, division, you know, is known to be a little bit weaker and usually doesn't, you know, send many players in the NHL. There's only a few that I've seen that, that have come from the Atlantic Conference that have made to the NHL. I'm not discounting the Atlantic Conference by any means. You know, I just kind of want to be honest with you guys and bring it to light that this one is usually kind of the weaker sister of all the other conferences. Like if you compare Hockey East or ECAC, for example, who usually are a little bit stronger and send more players to the NHL and higher pro leagues. But, you know, NCAA, if you want to go into AA D1 and, and Atlantic Conference uh, institution offers you a spot, obviously, you know, if that's your you know, an option you get, you know, you don't want to turn that down. It's still a great spot to go to, you know, if it's the best fit for you. So I don't want to discount them by any means, but I just want to kind of bring that to light as well. But overall here, whether you're going Hockey East, ECAC, Powerhouse Program, Atlantic Conference, whatever it is, you know, NCAA D1 overall more and more now is becoming a great spot to go to if you want to try and make the NHL. And if you don't make it, uh, go to other really good pro hockey leagues. All right, so moving on to the stats of U Sports here. So U Sports is kind of like the Canadian counterpart of NCAA uh, D1. You know, really good hockey programs, really good hockey players go into U Sports, you know. Usually it's guys that have played uh, major junior, some junior A, but mostly major junior hockey players that don't quite get the pro deal they want. They don't quite cut it yet at the pro level. So they, either, they choose to, you know, go to school and keep playing hockey at the same time. And some of them choose to do this to further develop so then they can have their shot of going to play pro. Now, the exact stats here are quite difficult to find online. I wasn't able to find exact stats like uh, NCAA D1, which is a little bit frustrating, I know. But overall, I would say the makeup of players um, playing the NHL that have played U Sports Hockey is much lower than NCAA D1, which is probably why the exact stats are hard to find. That being said though, there are some good players that came out of U Sports that have made it to the NHL and actually have made an impact. So most notably, Joel Ward, uh, he's played you know a little bit of everywhere in the NHL, but he's made quite a bit of an impact and he's he scored some big goals in uh, playoff series and stuff. So you know, U Sports do not take this uh, league and division lightly. They're a very, very good uh, collegiate hockey pro or collegiate hockey league altogether, and they really produce some really good players. And you know, some of them, the really elite players that use U uh, Sports, do end up making the NHL one day. Obviously a lot less than NCAA D1, but still a good option to go to if you're looking for, you know, good caliber, good development, and, uh, you know, overall to try and, and make pro hockey. If you don't make the NHL of U Sports, chances are you'll have other teams, you know, either East Coast Hockey League, Southern Pro Hockey League, you know, uh, sometimes even the AHL, you know, and uh, abroad in Europe as well that are going to be reaching out to you because, you know, a player that comes out of U Sports and has a decent career is valuable to those teams. So, you know, there is some value in playing U Sports and it's not like you're throwing it all away if you're going over there. It's very good hockey. And last quick thing here, and this is a personal opinion of mine, much like we saw in NCAA D1, where in the 2000s, you know, the makeup of the NHL was a bit smaller of players who played NCAA D1 versus today where it's quite significant. I think U Sports is going to follow a similar path here because the U Sports hockey is only getting better and better. You know, when I've watched it, it's very, very good hockey. And I think as it grows and as uh, more NHL teams really start taking it seriously, I think more and more it's going to grow and more players that are playing U Sports are going to make up the NHL one day. That's a personal opinion of mine. Obviously, I can't really. Uh, you know, tell you guys for sure this is what's going to happen. But I think in the next 10 years or so, you know, we're really going to see that shift where um, the NHL is really going to, and other pro leagues are going to want to see players uh, develop for an extra three or four years at college and then go from there and try and make, uh, you know, their teams and that. So that's the trend that I think is going to happen, but who knows, right? It's hard to predict the future. All right, now, last but not least, we're going to move on to NCAA D3 
NCAA D2, and ACHA. Now they're not the same caliber by any means, these three divisions, but they all have pretty much the same stats and I hate to discourage you guys with this, but getting to the NHL from these particular divisions, uh, you know, is very, very difficult and it's very, very unlikely. Uh, the stats really show that only a few handful of players out of NCAA D3 ever even, you know, played a game in the NHL. Now, I don't want to discourage you guys, but it's just the truth, right? There are a few success stories here. Uh, most famously, we have Curtis McLean, who played in the NHL uh, for the New York Islanders, you know, and that's a huge, huge accomplishment, right? Coming from NCAA D3 and playing. But I want you guys to know a few things about this though, because it's nice to see these success stories, but if you dig a little bit deeper, you see the reality. So first, he played a, in a powerhouse program in NCAA D3, Norwich University. Very, very good hockey program. One of the best in all of NCAA D3. So that's one thing. Next, he absolutely dominated at Norwich, okay? He had like almost two points a game last year and he was the captain of his team okay after that too he played for the new york islanders but only for four games okay so that's important to note he had to grind his way up there for like multiple years finally made it played a few games and that was it then he played in other you know pro leagues afterwards still a great accomplishment still really worked his way up and by no means am i trying to downgrade him here but i'm just trying to give you the reality of things that if you do play in double d3 NCAA D2 or ACHA, you, if, you, if your goal is to make the NHL, you really you know, are starting behind other players that have a better resume and pedigree than you. you know? You're really gonna have to claw your way up through leagues. It's not gonna be easy. And making the NHL, the chances are quite slim. That being said though, you know, that's just a reality, but you know, it, I don't wanna discourage anyone by any means. I don't want to make it seem like it's impossible. Honestly, anything's possible if you if you know you put your mind to it, you have some hard work, dedication, all that stuff, you do all the right things, but it is you know very unlikely and I just have to be real with you guys on this. Last quick thing though is that even though the chances of making the NHL per se are quite slim if you're coming out of NCAA D3, NCAA 2, ACHA, you know, if you're coming out of a pretty good program and you've, uh, you know, had a really good hockey career throughout, especially NCAA D3 here, doors are going to open for, you know, minor pro programs. So, you know, if you had a really good NCAA D3 career, you could be looking at, you know, the SPHL or something like that or leagues in Europe as well. You know, so it's not like it's impossible. You know, you could start in a lower league and work your way up. But that's usually where you're gonna you're gonna start about. Again, you know, if your goal is to play the highest level pro possible, definitely go for it and definitely, you know, don't let these statistics or anything, you know, kind of weigh you down. But I think the stats are important for you to have an idea of what you're gonna be facing at when you're going out there. Now, before we end the video here, I just have a quick word of advice that I want to give you guys. So as you can see throughout this video here, you can kind of see a theme where the better of a collegiate program that you commit to the easier it is to play in a higher end pro program moving forward, okay? Now, because we know this, the word of advice that I want to give you here is that when you're young, you know, invest in your athletic and academic, all your development, your personal development, as much as you can, okay, as much as possible, and from an early, as early of an age as possible. This is really important because that'll, you know, allow you to become a better and better hockey player in person, and the better of a hockey player slash person you are, the easier it is for, it's going to be for you to, you know, be wanted by coaches to, to potentially commit NCAA D1 and from there potentially, you know, play in the NHL or play in a high-end pro league and all this kind of stuff. So invest in your development early. It'll really pay dividends for you in the future. All right, so let's just do a quick recap of the video here so you get the key takeaways. All right, so first, we all know that making the NHL is quite difficult, right? It's a dream that a lot of us want but it's not impossible. And the trend's showing that more and more now, you know, players who make the NHL, that compose the NHL, more and more are composed of players who've played collegiate hockey, and in particular, NCAA D1 hockey. That being said, you know, you should aim for the highest possible NCAA D1 program that you can, the highest end one you can, because by doing this, it really increases your odds that you will make the NHL, and if not, you know, a higher end pro league down the road after you're done your four years. So with that in mind here, invest in your development on and off the ice from an early of an age as possible and as much as possible because it really will help you play for the best 
you know, collegiate program down the road if that's a road you want to go down. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. But before we let you go here, just again, if you haven't done so already, absolutely smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video if you liked it. Like we said before, if you had any questions throughout this entire video, if you want to talk to us about anything, if you have any comments you want to give us, feel free to drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And last quick thing here, if you want to follow us on any of our other platforms, you know, if you think about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, if you want to check out our website, our newsletter, all that kind of stuff, there's a link down in the description below that you can click and it's going to give you nice access to all of it. And that is it guys. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on that next one.